Ich kann nicht so gut Deutsch sprechen, so ich will switch to English. Um, um, it's great to be here. I never told that the place where a wagon like this is, so it's a really great location. And uh, as, uh, as it was told, my topic will be future proofing the uh, digital museum infrastructure, which I will explain a little. Uh, before that, I will explain uh, where I'm coming from. I work at the Slovak National Gallery, uh, and the Slovak National Gallery is currently undergoing reconstruction. As you can see on these pictures on the uh, right side, you can see the view from the uh, overbridging of two old historical buildings uh, with a beautiful view to Danube. And uh, on the left side, you can see the uh, situation in the future. It should be finished in about two years, but you never know because these kind of things uh, tend to um, take time, uh, usually. Um, while this reconstruction is still running, and even before that, because the reconstruction had to start, or should have started, 10 years ago, uh, we are thinking how, how could we make up for the lack of uh, exhibition spaces, because at the time, and even now, we only had three floors in one building, which you can't see on this picture. So we, we could only have like two exhibitions running at a time in Bratislava, which is our main uh, location, the capital of Slovakia. So one of the options was to go digital to try to extend the activities of the gallery in a digital sphere. And uh, really, it really boosted uh, when we started to work on a project digital gallery in 2011. Uh, it wasn't happening only in, in, in Bratislava and all around Slovakia, because many galleries, not only Slovak National Gallery, was involved uh, from east to west. Uh, one of the locations where we digitized our artworks is uh, Zvolen Castle in the middle of Slovakia. Um, on the left side, you can see um, the scanners that we used to digitize most of the paintings. So this, this gave us really a, a opportunity to uh, do something about the content because usually when uh, museums, galleries, archives think of digitization, they think first what to digitize and what and they know or they should know in advance what to do with it. This wasn't our case. We had to simply digitize 100,000 uh, artworks because that was the aim of, of the project. It was funded by, uh, co-funded by European Regional Development Fund and uh, of course, we did select, like, these are the best ones and these are the most uh, valuable and uh, used artworks. But we just simply had to fill in the numbers so we didn't select uh, so critically. And only then we th thought of what to do next with the content. And that will be also the uh, topic of my presentation to uh, think about the use and the infrastructure so that it's not just for one uh, project, but it's for a long time, and you can use it not only during the project, but also after it for exhibitions, uh, for social media, and other uh, projects I'll be talking about. You can see some numbers. If anyone is interested, we uh, used large format crew scanners, which are from Germany, and they are really good at digitizing at a fast pace. You don't have to set up the lights like you have to when you uh, digitize with uh, photo cameras. You have to, of course, uh, color manage the, the resulting images, but it's much faster and it allows for quick uh, process and high quality uh, resolution. Uh, we mainly worked in our internal teams, but we also had some external companies working for us, so we make it in time to reach those numbers. Uh, the result is what you get and what you see usually when you go to Google Art, and that's what they uh, like to promote, that they scan and uh, make accessible high-resolution images.
but usually it's only in a few numbers. In our case, it was all of these images, all of these artworks were digitized in high resolution one to one, so we could print a uh, analog reproduction in an original size and as close to the original color as possible. As one of the details on the left side, the reason why I chose this uh, artwork, which you have never seen before, I guess, it's because it's the most uh, widely used uh, painting in Slovakia. It's a picture you, you see when you uh, open the uh, history books in school. It's from 1849, and it's a revolutionary who's been fighting um, at this year. So this is one of the examples of public domain content, which I'll be speaking later on. Uh, to explain what I mean by digital infrastructure, I mean of the museum, I don't mean, of course, emails, uh, servers. That's something that uh, is there and it should be running on itself, but I'll speak about uh, the technical components which we use or the, the ideas behind which we use to uh, make it um, long-term and to uh, provide content not only for our institution, but for many other institutions, for many other projects and for people. Uh, this is the stack we use. Um, I'll just mention a few of them. Uh, one of them being uh, Fedora Commons, that's a digital asset management system we use to store the data resulting from the digital project. Uh, we display it using uh, IIF or IIP image server in a high resolution through OpenSea Dragon client. And we also make it findable through Elasticsearch full-text search index. This is the first hint uh, I, I'm uh, mm, showing you, which uh, is part of the future proofing of the digital museum infrastructure, which is you should use open source tools as much as possible. You should also use tools which you can easily reuse and customize yourself. So you shouldn't rely on a um, um, black box which is uh, provided to you by a company. Of course, many, many of the small museums have to do it. I, I, I know that many pe people or many museums in Germany also for the presentation they use Museum Plus. Of course, you can't afford to use tools which you can develop yourselves, but you should still have some kind of access to that tools at least in the form of API data. So you should have access to the data which the uh, company is hosting for you in a form which allows you to take it back and reuse it however, however you want to. With all this uh, content, uh, then question come up, came up, what should we do with it? There's been so much of it, then we simply had to make it publicly accessible because in the first place, it was funded by public uh, money, which means that it has to be made available to the public. We shouldn't keep it to ourselves only for the employees of the gallery or to the researchers. We should make it available as much as possible. This is some, something which is reflected in, in this um, um, trend of making the collections available, not just in a digital sense, but in a physical also. And I used the quote from Rem Kulhas, who was um, working on a project for MoMA in New York. And they were proposing an uh, um, architecture which would allow not just to see what's on the exhibition currently, but also to see what's in the deposits of the museum, in the museum storage, which is something which no museum has uh, achieved yet, I guess, even though you have open deposits of many museums, but it's never the option of seeing uh, the artwork or the museum item at any time. And this is only allowed with the digital tools we are using and we should be using to make the content public. So what did we do? We uh, developed uh, a online catalog of artworks called Web of Art, uh, in English, in Slovak, Web Umenia. Uh, which is not only for the artworks from the Slovak National Gallery, but it's also for artworks from all the other galleries involved. And um, we, we made something which is quite 
commonplace nowadays. You have this uh, menu in uh, museum sites which um, have collections online, Zamlung and online. So this is at the base of what we did. Uh, you can search uh, images according to the artist, according to the work type and so on. You can see the detail. Uh, something we did recently, if you look on the left side, is uh, search by color. On the item, you can see artworks which are related by, by the color profile, or you can see other related artworks, as you can see on this detail of uh, this beautiful Japanese um, um, print. Uh, if you look here, maybe you won't notice from the distance, but it's a sign of public domain, and that means that you can download the images by clicking here and just downloading it without any other information. This is was a decision we did at the beginning that we shouldn't restrict the use uh, into uh, creative commons, share like non-commercial or any of these creative commons derivatives, that we would go public domain so we wouldn't make any confusion about who could use the content. Because if you decide creative commons non-commercial, then the question is what's non-commercial and what's commercial? Is sharing on Facebook uh, commercial or non-commercial because it's something running by a commercial company, is it not? Um, what we also did was a uh, social network of artists. We created artist profiles for each of the artists we have in the collection. We don't have any original Rembrandts, of course. <laughs> That's only copies or graphic prints. Um, so uh, that people could also browse the content, not just through the classical uh, art historian terms, but something by something which they can uh, recognize better. A second hint is that uh, if possible, if only one coder you could uh, have half time or just for a few hours a week, go ahead and do it because we, all, we did all of this with one internal coder at the beginning. Now we have more people in our team, some external, some uh, internal. But if it's possible, do it because you're going to keep the skills you develop while doing this in your house. And it's not a company which is doing this for you, keeping all this data or metrics or uh, knowledge they gain while developing themselves. Uh, we didn't want to keep the data just in a form of online catalog. We also wanted to reach out to people who visit the exhibitions. So we did uh, one not so much microsite for uh, exhibition called Dream and Reality. It was about the Slovak fascist state, which was dark history, uh, dark chapter in Slovak history. And uh, we were asked by the curators to uh, create a layer of history on top of the exhibition, which was mainly about the visual culture, mainly about the propaganda, but not about the history. The history is something you need uh, to read in between the lines so that people don't think that all those smiling people uh, in the pictures, in the, in, in the photographs, uh, were just uh, doing well and there wasn't anything uh, bad happening. What we did was a uh, long-form storytelling uh, microsite uh, where we reused a lot of the content we uh, had from the project and we also reused a lot of the uh, digital and collection uh, exhibition content. So that's another hint when you prepare some kind of digital project, don't do everything from scratch, you can follow on from the content you already have and build up on it. Another uh, thing we did, not just digital, but also uh, in a physical space was a exhibition called Preserving the Universe, uh, which sounds interesting and it was about uh, the ways how the museums work in the behind the scenes, something that the people don't see usually. How do you store the images, uh, the, the artworks? Uh, how do you display them? And uh, one of the rooms was about uh, sketchbooks, sketchbook as a tool of the artist to uh, prepare some ideas. Usually you can't access the sketchbooks because they are fragile, they can't be uh, opened. And uh, what we did what was to exhibit those sketchbooks alongside application on, a, on an iPad which allows you to flip through the pages of the sketchbooks, which you can't usually do. From the technical point of view, that's not really anything uh, groundbreaking. It's uh, just a PDF viewer with a few features 
and uh, some setup which makes it really look good. But um, what we did later on when working on another exhibition, when there was a sketchbook by this artist on this exhibition, we simply reused the same app on the exhibition, not, to develop, not having to develop something again and again. And that's another hint I'm going to mention. Uh, similar thing, what we did is currently uh, is an exhibition that is still currently running. It's about the, um, the school of art in the 19th century when the painters from Austro-Hungarian Empire, of which Slovakia, or not yet Slovakia, was part, and uh, they went to Barbizon to uh, learn to, to, to draw in, 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 the, in the landscape. And uh, the curator ap approached us to ask whether we could do something digital, that's usually the way the curators approach us, could you do something digital? <laughs> that's really good because we have quite, quite a freedom to do something on one side, on the other side it's, um, it's hard to um, browse through all the concepts of the exhibition and to come to the core of it and find something which we can uh, deliver digitally because not every institution or exhibition needs a digital layer, of course. So what we did in this case, we took the data we have in, in, in the online catalog I mentioned before. We filtered just the artworks which are in this exhibition. We also included artworks from other institutions. That's what we do usually. We don't also only uh, store images and uh, data about artworks from Slovakia, but also from other countries like Czech Republic, Hungary and we uh, present them in, in a way which, are, which is accessible to the people coming f to an exhibition. So people coming to an exhibition uh, in one room, they have an option to uh, go to the touch screen and select uh, or find artworks not according to painter, according to the school, but according to uh, motive, according to mood and according to the weather. So would you select now according to weather, I think you would go for the sunny uh, one, and you could combine it with other um, um, options like water or feeling of uh, softness, which is in the middle. So you would get just one or two artworks. It's something really low-key, it's again nothing spectacular. You can zoom in and out and you would just get a feeling you can uh, take a picture of the QR code and uh, take the image with you to home. Hint number four, so reuse digital infrastructure components that you have. In this case, it's our Elasticsearch index, the, the backend of the database and the image server which uh, streams the images. And you don't have to create something from scratch. This was done in one week. It wasn't bought for 5,000, 10,000 euros. It was developed in-house in, in 10 weeks and then iteratively developed uh, while the exhibition is running. Uh, I've been mentioning open, uh, openly licensed content uh, a few times, so in the last part I would like to focus on this aspect. Um, as I said, we have public domain or non-public domain, which is not uh, freely accessible and non-downloadable. Non and what happens is that uh, companies just find the content, they, the, they do whatever they want. Some of them come to us, or many of them come to us and ask, hey, could we really use this for a commercial product like this? And we say, yes, you can. And this is what happens. There is a t-shirt on the left side. Might not look like that. It's not just a ordinary, ordinary uh, t-shirt. It's uh, like a fashion company uh, in Slovakia. And they sell it for like 100 euros. And this is the original picture, which is public domain. Or uh, a few months ago, um, a man from Germany wrote us whether he could use, again, the same artist, a different picture for a wallpaper, Künstler Tapete. And uh, he just did it so we can order this for, I don't know, from five to 600 euros, probably depending on the size of the wallpaper. Go ahead. And. This is the hint and the final one, uh, go public domain because um, I know that the big museums are keen on restricting the uh, licenses because they can make some money, but I think most of the museums, including museums in Germany, don't really make much money from licensing public domain content. And they should go and do it because they, get, they gain some other value than just money. 
And if you just uh, don't want to go digital, but you also want to keep uh, analog uh, using the digital content, you can do something like art prints on demand. That's something we do uh, on an online catalog. You could simply choose any uh, painting or artwork from the collection from Slovak National Gallery only, and we will print for you an uh, art print uh, with, on fine art paper, which will keep the colors as they are for 100 years at least. We will frame it for you and uh, deliver it to you. It's not really an e-shop where we would sell thousands of uh, prints a week. This is really a small-scale thing, more um, in a test phase now. But uh, it's working and people buy, it, I don't know, 15 pieces a week and they share it online. So you have some kind of other value again gained from the uh, public domain content or non-public domain also. To finish, uh, if, if you mm, took some pictures of any of the slides, you could also download or see the presentation on the link in the first line. And then you can also uh, open uh, the web page itself. I mentioned we also have an English uh, version coming up with the English metadata soon. We have, we have a Medium um, publication where we post about the uh, projects we do. And uh, the last line is, is my twi Twitter handle, so feel free to get in touch. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for this interesting talk and um, I think we have time for a few questions. So um, just raise your hand and I will come with the microphone. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you for the talk and the hints. Um, I'm interested in your archive um, digital web um, page and you mentioned that I can um, filter by mood or weather and I'm interested in the technical um, background. Um, are there keywords like written from human employees or is there like a artificial intelligence with um, machine vision behind it? Um, at the moment it's only uh, human um, um, entered metadata, so we tagged all, all those artworks by hand. Uh, we, we didn't use any artificial intelligence, any machine learning by, by now yet, but maybe we will do that in the future. But I think that we still have loads of options how to present the content with the, with the metadata we have to make it more uh, human readable. Because if you look at the um, art historian uh, uh, terms or, or the, the vocabularies they use, it's usually quite... Uh, mm, not uh, opaque, but it's not really uh, easy to understand by, by people who just look at pictures, who just want to see a nice picture of a dog. That's quite a commonplace use because people use it for uh, uh, illustrations in blog posts and they want to find public domain dogs. But this you could also do by crowdsourcing and we are uh, releasing a uh, tagging feature uh, soon on, on the web page which will allow people to tag it, which might be an easier option by now than uh, machine learning because those tools are still uh, not really mature. So. Thank you. Um, I have a question regarding 3D data, whether you do 3D scanning of objects? Not, not yet. It's something I'm, I'm uh, not... Uh, convinced about at the moment. I know that there are a lot of uses in, 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 in conservation, in restoration, also in presentation, but I haven't seen that many use cases that would um, uh, make the money uh, worth, uh, which have to go into it, because still with the photo, photo picture or the scan, it's much less uh, um, expensive. I know you can do photogrammetry for uh, really uh, low budget, even with uh, normal photo camera, but you have to invest a lot of into the post-production, so we are not there yet. Um, this point that you made about how the curation team will come to you and ask if you can do something digital, do you and your team do any kind of conversation with them about making digital-first curations, or do you see any 
movement towards digital first curations in your gallery? Yeah. <laughs> Usually or up until now it was something as a thought at the last phase of the curation uh, process and it was the case of this one and we talked to them and we tried to find out what's the best way how to present the content in digital whether it should be on site or if it's just enough to be online and uh, recently we've started to work on a project which is digital first so it won't be an exhibition at all it will be more a digital project and it will have a budget of a exhibition it's about the eight, 1989 anniversary of the fall of communism in Slovakia so we will be uh, testing this how it works because we are not curators ourselves of course we work with curators but we find out that it's really hard to build up something build up a story which uh, doesn't matter if it's online or off offline it's um, qu quite quite a hard task to do I think there's one last question and then we go on. Um, two questions actually. So the first one would be, um, do you have, a, do you have a, um, like, did you, did you, do you have like a, a, a transformation that you go through within the company as well, where you have this, this project and then there are more and more people within the organization coming to you and asking you, can you support us? That would be one. And the other one would be just what you referenced right now, that you are looking at this digital project. Um, do you have any, uh, any, any concept already for, for tracking or for actually counting the visitors for that particular project, like you would regular visitors to the museum? Um, <clears throat> the first question, if I understood right, is, is that about like snowballing? Like there is a one project and then there are more and more of them. Yes, that's the case. And now we are struggling with, uh, with the resources we have. Of course, we are just a team of 10 people in, in, in our department. <laughs> yeah, and then you also count in the external, but it's still not possible to make a digital project for every exhibition, but we find it hard to say no. <laughs> so uh, we hope we can uh, work it out. And the sec second question, um, you mean the metrics of comparing the physical exhibition visit and the digital online visit? Yeah, we do it, and recently uh, on a year, uh, our director has to do a yearly recap of the institution and the, one of the things she was mentioning at the beginning was that recently the visit numbers uh, of online at the online catalog outnumbered the physical visits of course you can you can't match physical visit to online visit but it reached a point where also the management and the director is thinking about it in terms of attendance that it's not equal but it's close to it. Okay, yeah, then thanks again for this wonderful talk and um